So, I'm having hypertension, but of course there are many other causes of, uh, like, if I'm, I'll be smoking, of course there's going to be atherosclerosis uh, very fast, and etc. But now, with hypertension, so my heart is getting thicker, so th this worsens the situation with possible MI, but also you don't have to have MI, but of course the most common cause of what? What happens? Of course, I can die right away with MI, okay? But what else? Like, with MI, watch out again. There are two ways how you can die, and one of them is, like, if you're going to have a small ischemia and an MI, it can die, and that's why it triggers what? Arrhythmia. So any kind of ischemia can trigger arrhythmia, which could be deadly, like, like MIFID or ventricular tachycardia. Okay, so... So this is very dangerous, and that's why many people die. Or, and typically it's combination, okay, it can trigger some arrhythmia, and the other thing is, if I'm having MI, I'm gonna lose, yeah, I'm gonna lose chunk of muscle here, okay, big chunk, okay? So it's like losing one head of biceps, okay? So of course it won't be so powerful in generating the cardiac output. So, when this happens, it could be due to arrhythmia, it could be due to, yeah, if it goes too fast, the heart, again, you're going to decrease cardiac output because you, the heart cannot catch up with the filling, so I'm losing the cardiac output. Or the, the half of the muscle is not working, again, my cardiac output decreases, and this leads to what? What do you call that? It depends how serious it is. If it's really fast and life-threatening, you call that cardiogenic shock, okay? And if it's like not so fast and you would be like immediately ischemic everywhere, but only like it's cardiogenic failure or heart failure, it's heart failure, okay? So heart, heart, heart failure is defined as that you're not able to, to fully like cover the, the need of the blood, okay? Yeah. Okay, so and when this happens, and we have, there are more types of heart failure, I'll tell you too, like clinically, okay? And it's related to hypertension, but may, many other. Remember, if you're having like just MI, rather there's gonna be some kind of dilation of the heart very soon. If it's like through hypertension, it's gonna be rather like that the heart gets thicker very much, okay? And, but again, they, they, they overlap, okay? But you got two types of heart failure. And what are the types? Have you heard about it? That, that, that's everything. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So preserved ejection fraction and with reduced ejection fraction. Preserved means that the heart got thicker, very much thicker inside. So it has... It has like thick walls and thick, it's very thick. And normally, what is the ejection fraction? Do you remember that? 60? 60? Yeah, 60. Oh, okay. Anyways, uh, if it's preserved, then you have it over 50%. Okay. So if it's preserved, you have more than 50% ejection fraction. But the thing is, it's percentage. So the volume of the one stroke is decreased over here, obviously, because as the heart got thicker from inside, the chamber is smaller. So it's nice that it's 50%, but the absolute volume of the ventricle is smaller. So the cardiac output, of course, decreases, okay? And, and you have many causes. Hypertension is one of them. But it always depends because later with hypertension, the heart can dilate then. And then you have, when the heart dilates, then you have decreased ejection fraction, okay? So if the heart would be dilating, like as I draw, draw it over there, then it would be like bigger like that, dilating. And over here, you can see how the heart is weak. So it has a higher volume of the ventricle, but it's not able to contract. So again, you're losing cardiac output, okay? But the ejection fraction in this case is decreased, okay? Yeah? So, but anyways, in general, it's heart failure, okay? So it means that 
And as I said, they can overlap. Hypertension is a major player, but you can have also some kind of cardiomyopathy, et cetera, et cetera. And other causes of heart failure would be what also? What can happen in the heart and you can fail very fast? So. Well, that would be like for the MI. But over here, I mean balls. Don't forget balls. If one ruptures or whatever, yeah. You're going to fail as well. So in general, there are more causes of heart failure, of course. But the main thing you should understand, when I fail, what happens? When I start to fail with left heart, where will the blood stay? Before the left heart, so, and the lungs. So I'm going to have full veins of, uh, there's going to be venostasis. And then I'm going to very, like, immediately have lung edema. Okay, so lung edema, and so, if I have a droid over here. So these are alveoli, and what happens is the alveolocapillary membrane starts to be full of water, so it's thicker, and sooner the water gets, very soon, I mean, it gets into the alveoli. So I'm having a hard time in exchanging oxygen and CO2. So the diffusion is not working as well. So when I'm having lung edema diffusion, that's a problem, and what else? The lungs are wet, they're full of water, so also the expansion is a heart. So I'm having a restrictive disease, okay? Restriction, I'm unable to expand it. Okay? So again, this decreases the, the function of the lungs. And how am I feeling, guys? And you had the lecture maybe on that. How am I feeling? What do I feel when my lungs are full of water? I'm feeling dyspnea, am I? So I'm having dyspnea. And watch out, again, dyspnea, and we talked about it, dyspnea has many causes, okay? Every time when I'm hungry for the air, so again, what could be another cause of dyspnea? Obviously, it's lunar failure. That's also, if someone asks you what's the main sign or symptom of lunar failure, you will say dyspnea. But the causes of dyspnea are many. It could be the COVID, the ARDS, what else, pneumonia. Asthma, okay, yeah, but that's in attacks. Ah, who said it? Anemia, exactly. Dyspnea, I'm going to feel dyspnea. I'm going to have a So, in anemia, okay? So, there are many causes of dyspnea. It's just a feeling. I need to work more with my lungs to get the oxygen. But remember, the other way, left heart failure means the, the main sign is going to be dyspnea. What's going to be the main sign of heart attack? Pain, yeah, pain over here somewhere, okay? Yeah, okay. So, remember that. Okay, and now my lungs are full of water. So it means, what? The blood is staying in the lungs. So, what about the pulmonary artery? What's going to happen over there? It's going to be full of blood, so the pressure increases. So I'm having pulmonary hypertension, am I? So I'm having pulmonary hypertension. So pulmonary hypertension. And over here, now the right heart gets overloaded. And this is a weaker heart, smaller, it's not used for high pressure, so it will fail soon. Now, it always depends how long it takes. I mean, if it's a serious failure of left heart, the, the, the more serious the left heart failure is, the faster the right heart fails will be. But remember weeks or months between these two occasions, okay? So that's it. The thing is now when the right heart will fail and the cardiac output of the right heart will decrease, what happens? We're here. This is when the edemas will be seen. Okay? So when the right heart fails So it's let's say transition from left heart failure to right heart failure, like to by, by heart fail, both ventricles fail now. And at this moment, the pressure will, the hydrostatic pressure will get increased in the interstitium of the periphery and I will have edema. Where? Depends on gravity. If I'm standing, it's gonna be in my legs. I, have, I will have double-sized legs. If I'm laying down in the morning when I wake up, it's fine. 
and I will send up, and soon I will have enough to be now with both laps, okay? So you won't have to be my right in the language? Yeah, well, you're going to have it not, not in line, but on your in the back. On, on your butt and on your back. Yeah, exactly. It's gravity dependent. If you would lay down with your head, it's going to be in your hand. This is the mechanism and reason why, after many years, people with hypertension will have edema. So, because so it, it, the pressure comes from backwards to the interstitium, okay? Will it right and it's called pitting or non pitting edema? Pitting or non pitting? It's pitting. You put it there and it stays there, the pit, for a while, compared to lymphedema, for example. That's very like. The pin disappears fast. Pitting. You press you, you press a hole in the in the lab. Okay. But still I'm getting to another question, like exam question. You you understand this, I suppose. I hope it's pretty simple. But what about pulmonary hypertension? Now we talked about what type. And we in pilotus we divided into two types. There, there's a clinical classification and but I want you to understand this one which is much more simple and like very logical. So you have two types, remember. This is capillary and this is the blood flow, okay? And this is one and this is two. So if the problem is behind the lungs, because pre-capillary and post-capillary, capillaries over here, I mean lung capillaries. So if the problem is post-capillary, which one it is? It's the one we talked about now. It's the left heart failure. So if whatever the reason I'm having left heart failure, it could be, it could be cardiomyopathy, it could be MI, it could be valve rupture or whatever. So, but anyways, if it's post-capillary pulmonary hypertension, the problem is in the left heart, okay? So that's the one we talked about. But what about the precapillary? Can you give me an example of precapillary pulmonary hypertension? That means if I'm having pulmonary hypertension, I will sooner or later fail with the right heart. But if it's precapillary, it means that the left heart is fine and the problem is somewhere within the lungs. Okay, so maybe it could be capillary, but pre-capillary. So can you give me some big problem that will cause an increase of pulmonary pressure? Fibrosis. Fibrosis. <coughs> so fibrosis. So any kind of fibrosis. So it means uh, cryptogenic even, okay, or we can talk about sarcoidosis, silicosis, asbestosis, all kinds of restrictive diseases. Okay, so it could be some kind of fibrosis, obviously. Lung fibrosis. What else? You were right. Embolism. Pulmonary embolism, okay. So pulmonary embolism. So I'm having a DVT and it flies to my lungs, okay, from legs or arms, okay. That could be pretty sudden. And if it's like successive, that means one after each other and massive, you fail immediately. Maybe pneumothorax? Pneumothorax, very good. Because pneumothorax, if one lung collapses, we have to push it through the other one. What else? Is there some reflex which forces all the... Coughing? Well, <laughs> depends. That would be too much philosophical, I guess. I'm sure you know, we can find a case. But now, is there some reflex which regulates the flow in the other one? And what's, what is it dependent on? On pressure gradient. Well, or in, I mean like ventilation. You know how is the outer regulation? You know how is the outer regulation, of course. And you want to be efficient in perfusion of the lungs. So you want to ventilate lungs that are perfused. So you have these reflexes. But in case you want to have air in the outer line, there should be vasoconstriction, isn't it? So look at that. What diseases? There are many diseases, and they, they cause smaller bronchi, what you call it, and it's chronic, so it's COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary. So chronic bronchitis or emphysema, they, they come together in, in the COPD term. So both of them are, are chronic, and what they do is 
If the alveolar are not penetrated enough, the arteries will be vasoconstricted there. So now there's vasoconstriction in all the, the alveoli. That's why you're having pulmonary hypertension. Okay? Yeah? So remember COPD. And what else? This is like in attacks. Obstructive sleep apnea, yeah. Well, asthma is like temporarily, but in, in, during the attacks, well, it depends. But uh, remember, obstructive sleep apnea, so s everyone who snores and has these apnoic pauses. During the apnoic pauses, there are many mechanisms, and one of them is this vasoconstriction that causes pulmonary hypertension, okay? This time, the hypoxic vasoconstriction? Yes. And what is again OSA? OSA, obstructive sleep apnea. Your parents, more likely fathers. That's what you should remember. Pulmonary, you don't want to have pulmonary hypertension, so you should send your parents for sleep apnea. And if they have more than 50, or I don't know what is the limit, pulses per one hour, they should get a CPAP, okay? So these were the causes. It's pre-capillary and post-capillary. And last thing, I guess, for today is and remember that you have a term core pulmonale, okay? And this one, you can put all causes from the precapillary cause, okay? So that's, that causes core pulmonale. So, core pulmonale. That, that means that the heart is failing or it's like looking bad because the problem is pre-capillary, so it's within the lungs. If the problem is generated by the left ventricle, so it's transposed to the right, you are not calling it corpulmonale, okay, or nali. Okay, corpulmonale, that means there's something with the right ventricle, but the problem is generated within the lungs, not after the lungs, okay, yeah? Yes. Uh, and this is when you have a problem the uh, right ventricle, but it's due to the lungs? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, for example, your example, or who would know, you have the pulmonary embolism, obviously it will cause corporal pulmonary. So there's a problem of the right ventricle, but it's generated within the lungs. So all the restrictive diseases you put there as well. Yeah. Basically, hey, heart. It's like pulmonary heart. That means he has solitarily problem in the right ventricle, not left. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So I hope you're gonna remember something out of this, and you're gonna use it as soon as possible. Okay. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always. Check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.